Well, this is a very busy road next to me. This is Attercliffe Road in Sheffield. And I'm here because I've been getting more and more questions uh, on the backs of videos that I've filmed on lots of different venues all over the country. And, you know, it's quite obvious now that obviously with the, with the cost of diesel and petrol and that sort of thing, I've noticed there are lots and lots of people that are cutting down on their traveling. I'm seeing this even within match fishing. You know, there are lots of people are not wanting to, to travel so far to venues for matches and things now, but obviously there's people out there that can't even afford to go match fishing, you know, they just want to go for a day's fishing. And that's what this upload is all about. I'm going to be, over the next few weeks, just showing you some of the venues that, that I know about. Um, there are some here in Sheffield, which is where I live, in South Yorkshire. But just to show you that there are some venues, really nice venues, where it doesn't cost anything to fish. Um, and But even the venues that are day ticket venues, I just want to tell you about them to show you that you know, there are lots and lots of venues out there. And that's why I'm here today. You can probably see above me there, it says Five Weirs Walk. And this is a walk that goes right the way through Sheffield. It's a little bit windy just here, but this is basically at a cliff road. And this stretch here is the River Don, and it's affectionately known as Salmon Pastures. So this is the Five Weirs Walk. This is just part of the Five Weirs Walk. And this here, is Attercliffe Road. It runs, that's going right the way into Sheffield city centre and that's running back that way towards Darnell. Okay, it's a very busy road, it is midweek. And so I'm just gonna show you where, I've only fished here probably half a dozen times myself, but here's the river. Down there, probably quite low. It is the back end of, of, of summer now. It is, well, it's September now, so we're expecting the level to be quite low at the moment. But let's have a walk down and I'll just show you the pace. Now this bit here is where you can access the river, just through underneath up the arch there. And this is where I've always been able to park. Now, just a word of warning, it's Wednesday, okay? And as you can see, it's quite busy. What you find is that obviously these are all workers. There are lots of factories and things around here. So this can be very busy during midweek for parking. So you might want to come early or you might just come in and get the little like I just have. But at the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you'll probably find that there aren't any cars here. So parking is much easier. So this is a five wheels walk, all right? And this basically runs right the way along the river. We've got a nice map here just to show you where we are. Okay. I'll just follow that round there for you. There's lots of information on there. So this is obviously a video, so you can pause it and watch it back as many times as you wish. So that's just some background information there. And for those of you that are wildlife lovers, you can see all sorts along this route. All right, so I'll just cover that for you just to give you an idea of what it's like. Now this is the walkway now. The river is just down there. And this is the stretch where I actually shot a winter video on the Catch Fishing Channel, which you may remember, and it was a period when the river was actually flooded. And a large section of this, this bit here was completely underwater. There are places where you can get down here. Like I say, it is free, it's free fishing. And the types of fishing that it is, is basically, um, it's not like the other stretches of the River Don that you might have seen around Sprotborough, around Doncaster, where, it, where, it, where it's wider, it's deeper. Um, generally there are shallower faster glides but this is more of the uh, the upper stretches of the river so really if you, if you want to clarify this sort of fishing on here it's a little bit more like game fishing okay so in here there are ropes there are chub in here as well there are barbel in certain stretches um, not far from here I have heard of one or two barbel being caught here as well but it's mainly trout and grayling fishing with maggots float fishing is generally the best way to catch those fish because obviously you can run the, the float through and you can search the full length of the swim and a lot of the um, the pegs here are quite shallow as well so you don't need really big heavy stick floats or anything like that just short stick floats will do or you could just cast a bomb around with a long long hook length like I do just a couple of maggots on and you can pretty much catch anything now we're just going underneath this is the road bridge this is the Attercliffe road bridge so that's the the, um, the road where we've just been and that's just as we come out of of the bridge and as you can see the banks are very well worn but I know that these get fished quite regular as you can see you can get down really nice and easy to get down and there's actually a little bit of colour in it we have obviously had some rain but yeah there's a bit of colour in it 
as you can see that's the main floor going through there on the inside bend on here and over there as well but that's a beautiful glide isn't it that look at that imagine running a float down there beautiful looking swim but as you can see it's easy to get down as well and i will show you some of the other pegs in a moment a little bit further upstream as you can see there's all spots here where you can get in the water slows down here as it comes out of that shallow rapid there it's much steadier here looks very fishy doesn't it looks really nice and you can see where people have fished that's what looks like another spot just there just there and if we follow that path there that way downstream that is the continuation of the five weirs walk now a little bit further upstream this is actually where i've just accessed from where i've parked straight in front of you here there is a well-worn path here to a swim that some of you may recognize this is one of the last swims that i fished on my uh, little river campaign and this is where you're actually on the inside of a bend here the water is much much lower than it was when i was here as you can see you can get down there you're on, on the inside of a bend here as you can see you've got the faster faster water there running across that far bank we've got some very inviting inviting overhanging trees there and that's where the flow goes down that far bank and again that's a really nice glide right the way down to where it actually starts to shallow up again but there is room for definitely two or three pegs here to be fair definitely two pegs but the last time i was here one of the days the water level was literally about there that's how much extra water was in but i remember this being a little bit deeper here really looks like a you know like a, a fish holding spot i remember coming here and fishing this stretch when i was a kid we used to come down here in the, in the summer evenings because after school obviously there was enough light we could get on the i think it was the number 52 bus from crooks and we could get down here and still have two or three hours fishing but just going to go up now and just finally just show you this long glide this is the glide that i fished in my winter video and as you can see behind me it's much much steadier you can see the bottom there there is a tinge of color in it it's not really really um colored like i initially thought it was but you can see the bottom so i'll give you an idea of how shallow it is but this is a a stretch here of about in peg equivalent i'd say it's a stretch of about 20 pegs you can fish for about 15 of those pegs where it's just a really nice shallow glide really really lends itself to 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 float fishing we might even see one or two fish but like i said there's a tinge of color in well, let me just show you this beautiful glide just look over the railings there we go look at that you can't you can just make out the bottom at the moment but this is where i caught um trout and grayling but you can see if i just hold the camera still you can see the sort of pace that you've got but it is really really shallow you know you're probably only looking at two two foot three foot absolute max so if you are going to head down here then you're only going to want short light stick floats if you're going to be fishing with the float this is an access point here where you can actually get down to the bank this was all underwater the last time i was here it's a little bit overgrown as you can imagine i don't think there'll be anybody fishing but it's really nice and quiet once you get down here because you're away from the actual path that's the main path up there of the five weirs walk so you are down here out of the way and we can really see the bottom here. it's really really shallow here there we go you can see this this long stretch it goes right the way up there and this bit here is shallower than anywhere else certainly on the inside and that will give you an idea of how shallow it is i have seen anglers actually wade out to halfway and then run a stick float down that far bank where it's a, a fraction deeper but um to be honest when i've been here i, I, I prefer not to disturb the water wherever i can you know um as you can see it's very very shallow and you won't want to spook any fish not unless you're going to be doing anything like casting upstream or casting a fly or anything like that but uh, this is just such a nice stretch and, and as you can see because of all this tree cover and that hillside there it very very rarely gets affected by the wind so it can be a really nice spot to run a stick float through and, uh, and get out of the elements as well when the weather's bad this really is a beautiful stretch it's got loads of fish in it and it is free to fish so i hope you found this useful if you are 
from in or around Sheffield but obviously even if you're not you can still come here and fish for free but it's a beautiful stretch and it's one that I think a lot of people just don't, don't realise is here and certainly in these days when it's quite costly to go and uh, travel to, to other fisheries if you do live in or around Sheffield then this could be a lovely spot for you to come and try.